Weather becomes active today with a chance for severe storms and a little bit of flooding as crashy the cold front brings much colder temperatures to the state over the next several days, including the chance for some snow. Let's talk about it in today's edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. And good morning, I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Rammer coming at you on the 16th of March 2023, the Thursday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Thank you to all those who have been subscribing to our second YouTube channel, the Texas Weather Center on YouTube, in addition to our main channel, Texas Storm Chasers. That's really the best place you're going to find these sorts of videos as some of the other social media platforms tend to limit our reach greatly. So you're probably not seeing most of our stuff. We are going to be dealing with the chance for severe storms today, the possibility for some decent widespread rains, and we're going to see much colder temperatures arrive tonight and tomorrow as crashy the cold front brings 40 to 50 mile an hour north winds and much cooler conditions for most of the week, well, all of the weekend and good chunk of next week. Let's talk about it. Let's deal with today before we get into all that other nonsense. This is the latest severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center for this afternoon and tonight. Again, the risk of severe weather, level one, level two, level three, the higher you go on that scale, the more thunderstorms are expected to be severe, the more likely severe weather is it likely in your neck of the woods. A storm in a level one risk could be just as severe as a storm in a level three risk and vice versa. That being said, we are expecting the highest concentration and probability for rowdy thunderstorms later this afternoon and this evening to be along the Red River, southern Oklahoma, into portions of North Texas, Texoma, Northeast Texas. As a cold front moves south later this evening, we could also see storms expand south with that front, and some of those storms could also be severe. Today's primary severe weather threats are going to be with the initial discrete thunderstorms, likely after about 2 to 3 p.m., maybe a little later, we could see very large hail. And again, these initial storms are likely to fire up southern Oklahoma, Texoma, into north Texas, possibly into parts of central Texas. There may not be too many of them initially from about 2, 3 to 6 o'clock, but those that do form are going to be supercellular, capable of producing very large hail up to the size of tennis balls, and frankly, they may, it may be bigger than that if we get a really rowdy storm. Uh, the potential for localized damaging wind gusts up to 70 miles an hour and the threat for a few tornadoes. Today's tornado threat is not on the high side, but it is there, so we're going to need to keep an eye out. I do think today's most prevalent severe weather hazard will be large hail. And as storms fire up later this evening on that cold front that's going to be pushing south, we're going to see the potential for pocket change size hail, maybe quarter, half dollar size hail, wind gust, 50, 60, maybe 70 miles an hour, and perhaps a brief tornado. I do want to reiterate the fact that Contrary to popular belief, we don't know everything, so Mama Nature could throw a surprise here or there. You'll notice the start time at 3 p.m. Honestly, I can't completely rule out a rogue severe storm in East Texas by 10, 11 a.m. this morning, but for reasons I'm going to discuss here in a moment, I don't think that's going to happen, but I don't want to completely discount it either because when you challenge Mother Nature, nothing's good can come of it, so don't do it. In terms of... Uh, the potential for some flooding later today into tonight and tomorrow morning. We do note the highest threat for scattered flash flooding will be across the Arklatex, Northeast Texas, East Texas, the Piney Woods of East Texas, and the Eastern Brazos Valley. That's where we could see a couple rounds of rain today, tonight, and to tomorrow. That could cause some flash flooding, risers on creek streams, etc. The lower threat, maybe some isolated flash flooding, street flooding possible, eastern North Texas, the remainder of the Brazos Valley into portions of central Texas, south central Texas, and southeast Texas. Hey, you know what? This is a microphone. It'd probably be good if I had it down near me. Hopefully y'all can hear me, but I'll make sure that, well, y'all can. Uh, in terms of the forecast rain totals over the next three days, this is through about Sunday morning at 7 a.m. This morning through Sunday morning, again, highest rain totals likely across the eastern quarter of Texas, where we could see between one to three inches of rain. Locally, higher amounts are possible, and those rain totals become much less by the time you get near Interstate 35 and west across the northwest half of Texas. We could also see some showers and storms, of course, 
today, tonight, tomorrow across South Texas, and Saturday into Sunday, which could also bring the potential for some rain. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the high-res rapid refresh model. This is going to be for today and tonight. Now, a couple things I want to point out here before I get into the details. First off, I'm going to try to make this faster than the last two days, so you may have to scroll back and forth to see what you want to see, but, you know, that's a benefit of video. And two, contrary to what this model is showing, we may see a few more storms than this model shows after 3 to 4 p.m. in North Texas, Texoma, Northeast Texas, and the line of storms itself... Notice it's going to struggle. It seems to indicate some of this line is going to struggle to form this evening. That's something we're going to have to watch for. It's not out of the question, in which case the threat of severe storms would be a bit lower, but not zero. Uh, something this model shows are storms firing up right behind the cold front, which would still be capable of producing hail. Uh, also, as we head into this morning, and I'll actually here, I'm just going to pause it. At about noon, you're going to see scattered showers, maybe a few storms, south central Texas up I-35 in the north and northeast Texas, widespread cloud cover across the eastern half of Texas. A couple things to note here. One, that widespread cloud cover could help keep some of the instability down and maybe at least keep the cap more in place, which would mean, yes, shower storms this morning, but probably are not going to be severe, but I don't want to discount it. Here's about 3 p.m. this afternoon. You can see this model run has a plenty of showers, maybe a few storms. Northeast Texas, East Texas, the Brazos Valley. Just like on March 2nd, when we dealt with mostly behaved activity most of the day in East Texas up until about an hour or two before sunset, today is going to be the same way. If we keep a capping inversion in place or a lid on the atmosphere, we're still going to see showers and storms across the eastern third of Texas late this morning into the early afternoon hours. But if that lid holds, we're not going to have to deal with severe weather. If that lid doesn't hold, what we're going to be dealing with is the potential for severe storms capable of producing a few tornadoes, gusty winds, maybe some hail. That possibility is lower than what it looked like a few days ago, but I still want to say it is not completely zero, so it's something we're just going to have to watch for carefully. All right. And then again, about four o'clock, you can see some of those storms again, East Texas starting to pop up a little bit more, but we also have storms developing in Southern Oklahoma, uh, in proximity of Red River. There may be a storm in Northwest Texas between about two to four o'clock that moves across the Red River into Southern Oklahoma. Uh, we'll fast forward, here's five o'clock. You can see starting to see some initial activity developing in North Texas into Central Texas. That's probably likely. We might have a storm already underway by this point. We might not. And then here's six o'clock. You can see isolated to scattered severe storms firing up across portions of North Texas, the strongest of which are gonna start producing hail pretty quickly, probably. Localized damaging wind gust and maybe a tornado or two. As storms continue to fire up ahead of that cold front, you can see the cold front itself extending into southeast Oklahoma, down to roughly north side of Fort Worth with a few severe storms underway and portions of north and east Texas. Here is 8 o'clock. You can see we've got scattered severe storms underway, producing large hail, localized damaging winds, maybe a few tornadoes. We note that stuff in east Texas as well. So again, we're going to have to watch not only the cold front, the dry line in north Texas, where we're expecting the most severe storms, or I should say the most numerous severe storms, relatively speaking, to fire up, but we could also have isolated severe storms way ahead of the cold front in East Texas late this afternoon and this evening. And just like March 2nd and many other days we dealt with, it's going to be a question of if and if, when, storms escalate from just showers, isolated storms, Severe, or isolated strong storms with some small hail and escalate into surface-based supercells capable of producing a few tornadoes. Anyway, as this cold front catches up with some of these storms this evening, they're all going to start moving southeast quickly. You can see here's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Storms generally, the line itself is going to move southeast. Individual storms northeast at 40 to 50 miles an hour. And then here we go through 11, 12, 1. You can see a pretty good line of storms now from near Eagle Pass to Uvalde to San Antonio up to Bryan College Station, Nacogdoches. And again, if the cold front's moving a little faster than models indicate, which is possible, this line of storms may be a little further southeast. And then we're going to continue through 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. You can see we might have some strong storms, maybe some hail, heavy rain, gusty winds. Houston, just northwest of Beaumont, over to Jasper in East Texas, the Golden Triangle, back into the coastal plains, Victoria. 
And again, you can see, unlike the cold front back on March 2nd, when it rolled through, everything cleared out really quick, we were done. We're going to have plenty of showers and storms continuing behind the cold front as temperatures plummet Friday morning. Now, some of those could have some hail, but the severe weather threat will be lower. And again, that is 5 a.m. Friday when our severe weather threat should be mostly over and we've transitioned to a heavy rainfall event these are going to be producing some pretty heavy rain now talking about temperatures over the next few days we are going to see much cooler temperatures behind this cool front on friday through the weekend of next week uh, temperatures tomorrow these are high temperatures generally 40s in the panhandle 50s across the northern three-fourths of texas and this is from 7 a.m onward so at this point, the cold front would not have reached the Rio Grande Plains, the Rio Grande Valley, where temperatures tomorrow morning about 7, 8 a.m. will still be in the 70s. That's going to change by about 10 to 11 a.m. Temperatures are going to drop into the 50s and 60s. So tomorrow is going to be a much colder day across the state of Texas with gusty north winds making it feel cooler. And it's going to probably feel even cooler than we might typically expect, say, if this was January, February, because it's been warm as of late. Now, as we head into Saturday morning here, the forecast low temperatures, you can see we're expecting a freeze across parts of southwest Texas, higher elevations around Alpine over to Sanderson, Concho Valley, maybe parts of the hill country, with a hard freeze across the Texas Panhandle, west Texas, into northwest Texas. And again, temperatures will probably vary a bit. We could see some cooler spots with frost in the hill country where we have valleys and parts of north and northeast Texas. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. It wouldn't be a bad idea to protect your sensitive plants regardless. High temperatures on Saturday are relatively the same. Uh, we note around Alpine where we may have some snow Saturday morning. Temperatures in the 30s on Saturday. Otherwise 40, upper 40s to 50s across the state of Texas. Sunday morning same story in terms of temperatures. We're going to have another freeze across the Panhandle, West Texas, a little warmer by a degree or two in Texoma, North Texas. But again, another cold morning for most of the state. High temperatures on Sunday, actually going to be a bit cooler across the western half of Texas, only making it into the low to middle 40s. Looks like 50s across the eastern half of Texas, and this is when we may have precipitation ongoing. And then Monday, it's actually going to be cooler across the hill country, central Texas, the big country, the Concho Valley, up into West Texas, the Panhandle, as our next precipitation event begins, and a cold rain for most, maybe some snow might mix in, for multiple regions of Texas. Now, here's a look at the North American model from um, Friday morning through Saturday afternoon. We're going to have plenty of rain, it looks like, on Saturday. And yes, this model does have some of that rain mixing with wet snow at times Saturday morning into early Saturday afternoon across portions of the southwest Texas, Big Bend National Park, into the southern Concho Valley and Hill Country. That's totally possible. Now at this point, there might be a wee bit of accumulation around alpine higher terrain, but I don't really think we're going to see too much in the way of impacts or accumulations farther east in the northern Edwards Plateau or the hill country. Temperatures should be in the middle 30s above freezing at the surface. We'll be watching because, well, obviously if we're not watching, something will happen. But otherwise, a round of rain on Saturday across pretty much the southern half of Texas and... You can see some storms out in the Gulf, but we're going to be much cooler on Saturday. No severe weather is expected. And we might also even see a few snow flurries in the Panhandle. In fact, we might see snow flurries in the Panhandle this morning. I neglected to mention that, but we're not expecting impacts. So with that being said, that is our Saturday-Sunday system. We might see another round of precipitation Monday into Tuesday. We're going to warm up quickly beginning Wednesday. And then the potential for some rowdy thunderstorms, maybe some severe weather returning in about one week thursday maybe friday as another strong upper level storm system interacts with a quickly spring-like returning air mass but we'll deal with all that way after this so hey you know what it's march we're active in march nothing really shocking about that welcome to spring in texas so we'll be dealing with probably many more of these little severe weather threats over the next two to three months but yeah it's texas 
and we'll be here for you. So in terms of chase plans today, uh, most of the team will be out chasing today. We're going to have multiple live streams going. Uh, we'll have live severe weather coverage if needed later today on all of our social media platforms, though we really encourage you to follow us, subscribe to us, hit that bell on our YouTube channels, Texas Storm Chasers and Texas Weather Center. And we'll be keeping an eye on things. We encourage you to do the same. You can do so with our free interactive weather radar on our website, texasstormchasers.com slash radar. Our mobile app is still available for Apple users. We've temporarily withdrawn it for Android users, but we have a whole new app that will be natively built for both platforms, hopefully coming out in the next month or so, maybe a bit sooner, but y'all are going to really like that. In terms of anything beyond that, well, we'll just wait and see. So y'all have a good day. God bless. Keep an eye on the sky. We'll be here keeping an eye on things. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.